Hello everybody, happy Sunday. Popovers, I absolutely love them. For those who are from England, you may say Yorkshire pudding. I will talk about the difference. Today we're gonna to teach you how to make a savory popover. We're also gonna show you how to make a sweet popover as well as a Dutch baby. Um, I decided to do popovers and Dutch baby in the same show. Normally I would separate them, but I thought, well, as we're using the same ingredients, let me just show with a slightly different technique and a slightly different temperature how something can change completely. So let's pour a glass of wine. That sounds nice. How are you, Mrs. Spielberg? I'm doing just fine. It's nice to be back after a two-week hiatus from travel. It is. I was in Florida. I went to see my daughter, Victoria May. Uh, she lives in Orlando. I got to see my friends uh, Kelly and Gina and Thomas and all the rest of our friends down there we had a wonderful meal uh, I mean Seth's watching and you didn't even give him a call out I'm about to give Seth one are you what a stare what a stare wow <laughs> I got to cook with my best mate Seth uh, I haven't cooked with him for about I don't know it must be at least 10 years and we got to spend a day in the kitchen with Talia uh, we got to spend Valerie was there uh, Asher was there and we made a really good family meal it was great quality uh, good quality time and uh, also Seth fixed some good drinks he knows how to fix a real stiff drink uh, you might notice Seth one of your plants is dead <laughs> <laughs> happy days everybody cheers oh, thanks let me come in yep so I've already started making some oh, popovers, cheers. Mrs. Spielberg. Cheers, everyone. <laughs> Lovely to see you. Mm. I've started making some popovers ahead of time. Popovers can be made and frozen. Um, Look at those. Mm. Yeah, see, so this is eerie light. You can see with this one where the fans caught it. It's so like I, a love heart. It is a love heart. It is. Ah, oh, you're long. It is. It's a love heart. Tonight. That's nice. Um, you can make them ahead of time and reheat them in the oven. They also will freeze as well. They'll never be the same as when they come out the oven hot and warm, which we'll show you that. So we're going to show you two different types. But I made these this morning. I was cooking these in a little oven on the countertop. And I noticed with the fan, you can see where it caught a little bit. See that small amount? Things yeah. like that bother me. You know, um, so I'm going to place these to one side. So what is a popover? Basically, it's just, it's going to be eggs, flour, some milk, and some butter. And what we're looking for is to create a steaming process, similar to a souffle, that's what we're looking for. A Yorkshire pudding, which is what we would call in England, is made with some beef dripping. We put beef dripping in the bottom of the pan, and then we would let that cook savory version. Today, we're gonna to do it with butter. Let's come over here. I was trying to get all the timing right today. I've let these cook for 15 minutes. I'm gonna open the door, and I'm gonna turn these around. We've got some sweet and some savory. Well, I'm rotating good. him 180 so these have been in for 15 minutes and now we're going to turn them back on when they go in the second time don't please don't open the door because what's happening now we're getting the steam process as they're coming up the outside's going to start to set because remember what happens is it goes in our goal is to get the moisture hot to cause steaming that steaming is the rise as it rises the hot temperature causes it to set and that's the way it's going to do i don't have a fancy you look budget. ridiculous i know i feel so silly sometimes and especially when i watch Whoa. these back because you know a fancy television show it has all these diagrams and it has like the you know the white office board and I am terrible at drawing. My daughter's brilliant. Uh, if I was to have a but wife... your hands are really going for it, so that's good. Oh, sausages. <laughs> oh, too many cricket. I do feel like a silly sausage. You know when I do this, I, I naturally do it as if I'm just talking to me and You're you. You're really close. Just back up a bit. Okay. Well, right. No, I'm, I'm probably put weight on. Uh, <laughs> probably since last time I put weight on. We're going to have to get a super wide lens if I keep on going mm. like this. Um, I, I think sometimes I want to talk to you like you're in the kitchen with me and that's why I try to explain it like that um, someone's going to do a montage of these with all these funky dances with what I do <laughs> they coming back this way yeah all right okay so there's two ways you can do it if you want a real chew and a high structure to your popover you can use bread flour which would be a high protein 
machine so we're going to focus on popovers first the dry mixture for this we've got some um, all-purpose flour or you could use bread flour if you wanted it a little bit more chew to it okay. um, I've added a pinch of salt to the bread flour so that's the dry ingredients for the wet ingredients we're going to take some milk this has been warmed you want this between 110 and 120 listen it doesn't have to be um, too accurate please I just warmed it up in the microwave um, and what why the reason why we warm that up is because we want straight away as much as we can for the, the, the heat of it that noise behind is Rigby's doing her first time in can the I kitchen show, can I show yeah sure she's on the floor she's down Rigby below. say hi say hi Rigby <laughs> yeah yeah we so, shouldn't have brought a toy as a squeak for yeah the show. <laughs> okay so look i've got some eggs i'm using some large eggs and i'm just whisking some eggs together okay yeah i've got some melted butter always unsalted butter that way we can control the actual salt and the butter i'm adding the eggs so now we've got the wet mixture all right yeah. Now with the wet mixture, Mr. Spielberg, I'm just going to start to slowly add it. Now a lot of people will say you use your food processor or use your blender. I don't feel you need to do that at home. I don't think there's any need to actually uh, to do that. It's just there's no point to it. And we're just mixing it around. And just coming in and mixing it, mixing the batter. And I'm just going to get, you know what I've done, Mr. Spielberg? Yeah. I forgot. I doubled the recipe. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Wendy Fields thinks that Rigby is irresistible. We think irresistible. Ms. She's going to Rigby is doing she's very well. She's going to steal the show, isn't she? Uh, Wendy to, also, to... the recipe with the quantities to... are all on. If you go back yeah. to the post earlier this week, there'll be the full recipe. So Let me just heat this milk up. I forgot to... Um, I forgot to double the milk, apologies. I'm making extra because we've got the neighbours coming over uh, for some popovers. My apologies. Sincere what, apologies. What's the quantity of butter? Uh, the butter is about, I think, three tablespoons, is it? Something I, like that. Apparently, it's not in the recipe. Oh, sausages. <laughs> oh, I don't know what. Hey, this is what happens when you give me two weeks off. <laughs> we'll have to revise the recipe. Wait, no, it's not. No, no, the butter was meant to be for the Dutch baby. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Oh, oh no. It doesn't matter, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. It's only a couple of tablespoons, but oh my gosh, this is like, you know what this is? This is the worst cooking show. This is the worst. <laughs> I need a slip of sausages. Oh, have a where's, glass of where's, wine. where's Doug? Yeah, it was supposed to be for the Dutch. I got them mixed up. I, I, I knew I should have just stuck to popovers. I'm excited that uh, our friend Jody, who's friends with Michelle and Chad from Rhode Island, is on. Because I was Hi, telling Jody. her about this. this How uh, are you? I'm sorry I missed you. I was traveling when you were visiting. I heard you had a joyous time for Michelle's birthday. Um, I hope Ray's doing well. Um, okay. No wrong one, Chris. Chris. <laughs> Oh my gosh, everything's going wrong. I can't Kelly's probably it. watching. I'm going to be like good. this, you know, I'm going to be like this at the end of the show. <laughs> Unbelievable. What, what a silly like. sausage. Carol Mills says that you are correct. That the butter is in the Dutch baby recipe. Thank you. It Carol. was, Carol. I just made a mistake there. I got a little, you know what it was? So is, excited to be back. I got so excited to be back. Um, the recipe. <coughs> oh, sausages. Non COVID oh. sneeze. Oh my God. <laughs> Gosh, Jimmy the Cricket. You know, the one thing you can say, it's live. I, do, I think that's the one thing we <laughs> loved about live. Julia Childs. It was live. Okay. So point being, Mrs. Spielberg, right? Yeah. Are you listening to me? I'm listening. We make the batter. Yeah. We've got the pans nice and we got the pans nice and hot. So what we do is we get the milk in there. We make, whip the batter up. If you wanted to, you could use at home. What are you doing? Your fancy angles I'm again? Good. I mean, I'm 5'11". I, I, can, I can do the overhead. <laughs> this is the joy of being tall. <laughs> Imagine if it was with Shaq O'Neal. It'd be above your head, wouldn't it? <laughs> I, I mean, I think my overheads are good. What do you guys think? Okay. Right. The batter we've mm -hmm. mixed, okay? Yeah. So I'm going to place the batter off. Now you don't have to worry too much about resting the batter because you're going to, for gluten, you know, when you think about it with the gluten, we're just going to let it come in and we're going to stick it to one side. Now you could, if you wanted to, if you really wanted to, you could make it the night before and then bring it out on the countertop, okay? Okay. That goes in. I'm going to place this off to one side. We take, I want to talk a little bit for a second. The recipe works. 
it works a treat. You'll see it come out the oven in a moment. Um, the butter was for the Dutch oven, but it'll just make a slightly richer popover. Okay. If you don't have a popover pan, can you use your muffin tin? The, the thing is, yes, absolutely, you can use your muffin tin. What's the difference? Let's take a look at the muffin tin to the popover. The popover is going to be deeper, so it's going to have a deeper pocket to it, but also the air circulates. If you look at the air circulating around. Is that these, circulation? That's circulation. Is that, is that your whiteboard? diagram for circulation <laughs> so technical the air would circulate <laughs> around oh, yeah. just like that if we look at the muffin tin the air doesn't circulate <laughs> quite as much what, what the can't. heck what the, i just can't today the, what, oh, what the heck oh and deb bought a popover pan to well done deb deb nice. i guarantee have you made the recipe Sorry, yet deb i know i sent it to you oh. um <laughs> listen if you do use your muffin tin don't use these two center ones Okay, Why? because the air will circulate around better. So fill the sides, all okay. that, but them two. Don't use those two, because then you'll end up with a better popover, I guarantee. Okay. Because more of the heat will eat the sides. This is the stuff I do when you're on air, Mr. Spielberg. And how I did that, I put water in them, and I used my InstaRead thermometer. So well, I brought it up to okay. the temperature, and that's yeah. when I knew. So which two do you use? The the two, these two here. Okay. Them two. Put your use your muffin tin, but you can do it. Always come up to about two two oh, about there, Mrs. Spielberg. Right. Happy days, right? So the question, next question is, is um, does it need to be ripping hot? Does it need to be preheated? You can preheat it if you want to. Um, I would say yes, absolutely, you can preheat it. But is it a game changer? Is it gonna gonna change the whole thing if you don't? preheat it no absolutely not um, so what I like to do with it is you can have a start it off with cold or hot it's not going to make a tremendous amount of difference I guarantee honestly I've tried both I wanted to say a disclaimer we did not have anything to drink before the show <laughs> oh my gosh you let's go I saw Elizabeth Corns on today hi Elizabeth. hi Elizabeth and Jeff how are you we miss you guys it's gonna be Cinco de Darbio soon yeah. uh, we have a thing with Elizabeth and Jeff it's called Cinco de Darbio it's a cross between the D Kentucky Derby and Cinco, Cinco de, de Mayo. Mayo so we had a one time in Chicago we got so drunk it was unbelievable um, okay if it comes out nice and hot in the oven yeah. we want to coat these small amounts of cooking spray this one's called Pam it's from Conagra we do they're not a sponsor <laughs> It's called Pam. Betty's Betty's having a Sunday off. Uh, small amounts of vegetable. Fill it up about two thirds of the way, Mr. Spielberg. Two thirds. About two thirds of the way. So the question is, if you want to have these savory, if you want to have them savory, we're going to add some Gruyere cheese. Gruyere cheese we know melts perfectly. It's nutty. It's wonderful. What are you laughing? Oh, stop it. I talk with me hands. I must be half Italian or something. I just talk with me hands. Could you imagine if I was a hair, if I was a stylist, a barber? I'd be like I had the scissor hands. You come out like a rose bush. Um, You're never touching my hair. Gruyere cheese, right? Gruyere cheese melts beautifully and it, it has a nutty texture to it. You could use some Comte. You don't want to use Parmesan because Parmesan, when it burns, it gets real bitter. But a Gruyere cheese would be perfect on the top. Maybe you could use a cheddar. You wouldn't want to use a mozzarella because it's just going to go all over the oven. As it comes to the top, it's going to come all over. But Gruyere cheese is the... Say it again. Gruyere like cheese. That. The rolling. I can't do that. Go, you, go on, try it. No, I can't. <laughs> I, I can also not whistle. Um, we place it into the oven, but you can see that the popovers are cooking lovely. Can you see? Now, this yeah. is just a, um, this is just one of these small countertop ovens. You know, if I can cook it in this, you know, your main oven, you know you're going to get some really good popovers. You can make it in there. You can make it anywhere. I, 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 I don't know what's going on with today's show. What is going on? This is, I think, what I, I think... Mrs. Spielberg's for I'm so overtired. I haven't slept since we got rid of me. I'm like slapping me. <laughs> okay. Dutch baby. Dutch baby. When we think about a Dutch baby, it's almost like a, a popover, exactly the same ingredients, but a slightly different ratio. The ratio for a Dutch baby, we would be making this, we're using a lot more eggs. We're looking for a, like a custard on the bottom. So it wants to be a little bit thicker as a custard. Whereas a popover is that highly leavened and it's very airy. The Dutch baby, we want the sides high, yeah? 
Would using a convection oven setting on my oven help or hurt the process? Help. It would help. help. It yeah. helps the airflow. It would help because the airflow. So knock it down. Show me the circulation. So, so Alexa, stop. Circulation is like this. <laughs> So what happens is with convection, what are you laughing at? You need, the so next wedding we go to. You're just making me do these things. The next wedding we go to. So the circulation comes around 25 degrees. This recipe for popovers has 400 Fahrenheit for 30 minutes. There's tons of recipes which will say 450 or 425, then lower it down to 375. The problem is with that, a lot of ovens are not the same. Mrs. Spielberg's gonna wet her drawers. The way Mavie you go. said the hand signals really help. <laughs> Oh, this started. is the only reason I do this show. Oh, I do yeah. it for therapy. I don't do it for any money. It costs me. Um, so if you... <laughs> <laughs> oh, sausages. Uh, Jimmy the Clifford. Sheila down the road made some popovers and she thinks we have a case of the sillies. Uh, we do. <laughs> Think about it, right? Convection, 25 degrees less. So 375. What we're looking for is push the heat, circulate around. Um, or 400 Fahrenheit. You don't have to go high and low. 400 Fahrenheit's the perfect temperature for a popover. Um, All-purpose flour. I'm gonna take some eggs. So uh, when we're thinking about making a Dutch baby, we're using a lot more eggs in this recipe. Uh, there's a lot more eggs in it, Mr. Spielberg, because we want to get that custard effect. Remember, the eggs are gonna be, the, they're gonna help it, they get the rise. Okay, so now we've got the eggs and we're gonna add some milk. Okay. And it doesn't have to be, so with this Dutch baby, whereas with the, um, with the popover, we're looking to get it steamed straight away. We're not looking to get the steam straight away. This is a lot more gentler. We want the sides to lift, but we want the bottom to stay custody. Because we think about a Dutch baby, it's normally something we'd have, well, you can make it for dinner, but it's normally something we'd have for breakfast and brunch. So we've got the eggs. We're gonna take some fresh lemon zest. Now, if you want to make this savory, what you could do, Mrs. Spielberg, if you want to make this savory, is you could just take away uh, the sugar okay. so the sugar I'm adding a quarter of a cup of sugar remove the sugar and you could add some Gruyere cheese to it I'm adding some you can smell that lemon it smells uh, so good. Um, I'm adding some cinnamon to it I'm just gonna take a small amount of that lemon juice Mrs. Spielberg Sally Hill thinks that you can take these moves put them to some Bee Gees music and you'd be just like John Travolta oh my <laughs> gosh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Staying alive. What, do I need to get a baldy head? <laughs> uh, I look like John Savilton in his latter days, not his younger days when he was all skinny walking <laughs> down. You can tell by the way I use my walk. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> okay, whisk this together, Mrs. Spielberg. A bit of vanilla extract and some salt, okay? Kiki made her first Yorkshire pudding with a prime rib roast last week. Oh, well Good done, Kiki. You, Kiki. Well done. Uh, we're looking forward to you visiting this summer. Um, thank you for all your lovely posts. You're quite the artist. Um, the Yorkshire pudding is a, it's a great recipe and any Englishman would love these. Um, you could use, as I say, beef drippings in the bottom or even some lard or even that reserved uh, bacon fat. Okay, wet ingredients into dry ingredients. Okay. We're not adding all of the wet ingredients because we want to try to work out we want to work some of those. I'm just gonna put this back on for a second. Sheila, I saw that, that uh, popover that you made with the chives and gruyere, that looks so good. With chives and gruyere, yeah. Um, so the- Wait. Linda said that both recipes that you put online have six eggs in them, and you mentioned that the Dutch baby has more eggs. Oh, uh, <laughs> no, uh, uh, <laughs> They keep you honest. It, I think I've just got a, I think I've just got one of those today where I'm like, blah, 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 blah. The recipes do work. <laughs> okay. Whatever the recipe says is the yes, way to do it. Yes, it is, yeah. Um, this is what happens when and you travel. And can you use duck fat, Thomas wants to know. Duck fat would be fantastic. Thomas, well done. Is this my mate, Thomas? Thomas Flynn. Yeah, Thomas Flynn, uh, I'll go. Yes, Thomas, great idea. You can use duck fat, it would be fabulous for that. Okay, look. The batter's slightly, you can see the batter. We don't have to worry about gluten development. Anytime we work with flour, we always think about gluten development, but because it's a thin batter, 
we don't have to worry about that. So with this recipe, Mrs. Spielberg, yeah. anytime you see a Dutch baby, you'll always see it going into a hot pan and a hot oven. We're gonna go actually different. We're gonna go into a gentle, we're gonna go into a cold oven. So the oven for this will be cold. Before we put this in the oven, let's just bring these out. I just wanna show you that although we had a few things wrong that this does work you can see this these come out Ooh, look at that see, green cheese yeah melted. look at this fan in this oven that's what i'm not a big fan of in my main oven i don't have this problem you can see the forced air in this small oven when they come out now right mrs spielberg yes. in order for these to keep the shape what you want to do is grab it Okay. just grab it and then just give it a little stab on the side a small amount of stab just to release that air otherwise that steam's going to actually help it fold just to see that see the way the steam's releasing yeah we want to do that and this is the plain one and here's the cheese one look at the cheese the cheese one looks so good the cheese is phenomenal I'm calling that just one. look at look at the base on it can you see the beautiful yeah. color now this was just in one of these little toaster oven things guys in your main oven you might get a little bit more rise to be honest with you so i'm bringing them out and i'm just giving them a little stab on the side just a small stab on the side see that mrs spielberg sure, and that's yeah. going to help it and then what we want to do mrs spielberg mm -hmm. is just take small cut i'm going to move this out the way okay and then what we're going to do mrs spielberg is place these just on here you can see that fan coating I said to you, I told you about that fan in their oven. It's a little bit of a bugger, to be honest with you. In your regular oven, you won't get that. I think what it is, is the oven's so short. This oven's so short and they rise so high. I think the fan hits it. That's why we have problems. But I had to use the regular oven for our Dutch baby. And um, when these come out, Mrs. Spielberg, these are perfect. I like to serve these with a strawberry butter, mm. the plain one, strawberry butter. And we make this by one, one cup of strawberry preserve one and a half sticks of um, because someone can write that down one cup of strawberry preserve one and a half sticks of butter uh, with and uh, sorry one and a half cups of butter so that's three sticks one cup of strawberry preserve three sticks of butter two teaspoons of vanilla extract and now we have a strawberry butter so if we pull if we take this we're going to pull this apart just look at the steam oh, coming good. out see it and you can see that it's so light and beautiful and airy and you see that yeah. and then what i like to do is i take some of this strawberry butter just take some of that strawberry butter and we smear that on and you can see the butter melts so beautiful and there you have a fantastic pop over and that's the one without the cheese same recipe without the cheese when it comes to the gruyere one we just open it up listen to that crunch you can hear the crunch you can see the steam wow. the top's got that beautiful color to it this is making me very hungry yeah i think what we should do actually is go back to dutch baby for a second and then we'll come back to that so the dutch baby we put it into an oven we put it into the oven cold and then we turn the oven on to 375 and the reasoning by that is that we want the heat to come around it and to cause it the bottom of custard and the top so let's go over to the pan here's the pan here mrs spielberg and what we would do is take this batter the dutch baby batter yeah yep and then let's see if we get our timing right me hopefully today we can get one thing right you think so i don't know it hasn't it's been one of those shows this would go into the pan and then the oven mrs spielberg would be on free the oven would be cold we'd put this in a cold oven turn the heat on to 375 for about 30 minutes i'm praying let me have a sneak peek. When, when oh, Anki, if Anki comes to visit from Sweden, she gets, she wants some stand, of these. Stand back, Mrs. Spielberg. Okay. Remember I told you, I said to you, I'm going to make a show stopping. You're getting really close. Oh, like your so, head is massive. Uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I said to you, I'm going to make a show stopping Dutch baby. Didn't you did. I promise you, you that? You sure did. Remember, you can make this savory by not having the sugar. Okay. Cold oven. Cold oven pan goes cold. in oven because i know a lot of people put the oven on hot you don't want it want it cold when it comes out 
you end up with a Dutch baby. Whoa! Look I've never this. seen anything like that. Look at this. This <gasps> is holy cow. That's the mother of this. all Dutch babies. Oh my god, it looks like a block of cheese. <laughs> Look at this. Holy Look at this. cow. <laughs> wow. Uh, that's a Dutch baby. What do you think, Rigby? <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> so there, a cold oven. When it comes to saving... <laughs> oh my god. I've got something right today. <laughs> Thank god. Uh, that even flop. Let's take this. <laughs> Take this off. You know a Dutch baby. Oh What's going to happen with a Dutch baby? It's always going to lose this, some of its hair. When it comes to saving this Dutch baby, oh, wow. you can go anywhere you want. What I like to do with this is I want to show you the texture. Just oh, look at the bottom, the way it's God. custody. Can you see it getting jiggy with it? Get in my belly. Isn't it? We take some of that Dutch baby. And then what I like to do with this, Mrs. Spielberg, I love to take some apples. I caramelize those apples, make a caramel with some apple. Stop it. Yep, and when we put this, now remember, you could do a savory version by not adding the sugar. You could add bacon, prosciutto, mm. mozzarella, and now we've got some caramel apples. You just got a yowza from Paul. From <laughs> Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine that coming out a savory version oh. with duck fat? A mm. savory version, it's always going to lose its side, but when it comes out, everyone at the table is always like, Oh my god, <laughs> please! That Instagram, amazing. Instagram, <laughs> Instagram, everybody's Instagramming it. And there you have what I would say is that quite possibly one of the best Dutch babies you'll ever have. It's got that beautiful texture mm. to it, it's got the apples, and it's just. I think Heath is salivating. She thinks it looks very good. The flavor, <laughs> yeah. And then you have the popover with the strawberry jam. Oh, and yeah. The popover with the Gruyere cheese. Listen to this. Well, <laughs> Listen to the crunch. It's got that crunch, that nuttiness from the cheese. The saltiness and just the flavor of the softness and crunchy. It's really delightful. Um, listen, we had a bit of a rough show today. Maybe chew for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> but I got this present. Oh, so Karen hot. wishes that we could save her a piece. Mm. Too bad you didn't live closer. Yeah, I wish you did. Um, <laughs> um, although we had a little bit of um, a little bit, a bit, a bit, a bit of a hiccup there, but I think that's what's good about the live show. That's what what it's about. Do you mix the strawberries um, with the butter in a food processor? Yeah, food processor. So one cup of jam. Um, three sticks of butter, two teaspoons of vanilla extract, give that a jolly good whiz in a food processor, mm. a little bit of salt, and then put it into a, um, I roll it. So normally um. what I do is I take some uh, plastic wrap and then a roll it. You can see I just roll it into like a log. Anki makes something similar at yeah. home in Sweden with um, lingonberry and bacon. Yeah. Oh, mm. stop it, Anki. Uh, I and love bacon. lingonberry Jamie and the bacon. Cricket. We'll mm. come over. We'll, when we come to visit, we'll do that. And um, you can also, if you want to, you could use some. Um, uh, what's the other? We just use guava. I sometimes do it with guava fruit as well with guava paste. Yeah. Um, although we had some hiccups today, I think that's really good when we do have hiccups because it shows that we're normal and things go wrong, and that's what life about life isn't perfect and it shouldn't be perfect it's not what happens here it's about how you deal with it so I love it when things go wrong <laughs> Deb wants to know because you know she needs more things for the kitchen what kind of pan did you use for the Dutch baby um, you know Deb I'm gonna say you could use any any um, any non-stick um, you want this one's Meissen um, this one's made by Meissen I tell you what I will say uh, Deb I'm receiving someone's this week from um, Hex Hexaclad or someone, some other company is sending me some this week um, and some chef friends have said they're really good. Let me give them a run for the money. So I'm going to go testing them with like a fried egg and stuff and if that's really good I'd advise that frying pan. Um, but a non-stick you could use a regular um, frying pan as well. Uh, but that one's Meissen. Um, Tefal is also a good non-stick pan. Um, uh, what are thanks. we doing next week? Yeah, next week we're coming up to Cinco de Mayo. So uh, I really love tortilla soup, chicken and tortilla soup. It's one of my favourites. Uh, we're going to make this a little bit, um, a little bit different than what you've seen in the marketplace. So we'll go through. Um, if you watch how we make this, we actually grate the onion. We actually fry the tortillas to make the base of the soup, as well as the superior chicken stock. So we'll be making that uh, on my YouTube channel. 
channel, John Ashton, uh, if you type in YouTube, John Ashton. This week we've got a guacamole recipe coming. Guacamole. Guacamole, we've got a guacamole with bacon and Parmesan cheese. We really get stuck into the avocado, talking about what to look for, how to shop for it, and how to make a really fabulous guacamole. And then on Parade's uh, YouTube channel, on Friday, uh, Thursday, we have quite possibly one of the best breakfast casseroles I've ever had in my life. We went in and stripped down a breakfast casserole and then put it back together to make that for when a family's coming in, a really good breakfast casserole. So that's this week. I'll see you next Sunday. Thanks for tagging along this week, giving us a window of your life. We really appreciate it. I know the recipes work, I promise. And I'm so glad that it went wrong for me because it makes me feel better. Take care, everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye.